Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good and today I am back with a video on maths, fractions and decimals. Fractions, what are they and why do we need them? Let's let look at this scenario. Let's say we have a pizza party today and all the kids have gathered to get a slice of pizza. Rohan ate one slice of pizza, Amit took two and Rohit took four. Now, if I ask you that who ate what fraction of the pizza? So, when it comes to Rohan, he ate one out of five slices, that is one-fifth of the pizza. Amit took two slices, so two out of five, that is two-fifth of the pizza. Rohit took four out of five, that is four-fifth of the pizza. Now, all these numbers, one by five, 2 by 5, 4 by 5, they are fractions. So fractions tell us how much of the total it is. Now let us look at fractions a little more mathematically. So let us see what is a fraction. It is a ratio of two integers in the form p by q such that q is not equal to 0. Now, this is a very mathematical definition, right? Uh, so, let's take one more example to define fraction. Let's say that this boy is reading a book and the book has a total of 100 pages. So, there are 100 pages in the book and the, this boy has already read 50 pages. So, total number of pages Total, there are 100 pages in the book and by now the boy has completed or the boy has read how many pages? 50 pages. So if I ask you that what fraction of the book have the boy already read? So what part, how much part of the book is already read by the boy? So how would you find that? This boy has read 50 pages out of 100 pages. So 50 by 100. What is 50 by 100? 50 by 100 is nothing but 1 by 2. So how do we divide these things so that we will learn later? So that is what is our aim in this chapter. So basically we find that the boy has read half of the book. So 1 by 2 is nothing but half. So half of the book is already read and the remaining half is yet to be read. So half is that fraction of the book which has been already read by the boy. Now when you look at half, this is an example of a fraction. What is it? It is a ratio of two integers. One is an integer, two is an integer. Ratio of two integers in the form p by q. Here one is p and two is q such that q is not equal to zero. Why q not equal to 0? Because if q becomes equal to 0, then the value of this entire fraction will be, be, will be in, not defined because anything divided by 0 is not defined. Therefore, in a fraction, we never want the q to be 0. So basically, when you talk about a fraction, the number which is present at the top is called the numerator. And the number which is present at the bottom or which is present at the down is called denominator. Now, how do you remember this denominator? D for denominator and D for down. So, denominator is at down and obviously the other one that is numerator is at top. So, let us look at some examples. So, anything of this sort, 4 by 10 is a fraction. 15 by 4 is a fraction, 1 by 3 is a fraction, 100 by 3 is a fraction. So these are all examples of fractions. So anywhere you see ratio of two integers such that the denominator is not equal to 0. So that is an example of a fraction. So that's fraction. So let us look at more examples of fraction. Look at this apple. Looking at this apple, if I ask you, what fraction of the apple has already been eaten? So you might say that two out of five parts, that, that would actually mean, now you might say that where are the five parts in an apple? What it actually means is in case you divide this apple into five equal parts, then I have eaten two parts out of those five parts. So that is what is called as two-fifth. 
so you would say that if you have eaten some part of the apple you say that i have eaten two fifth of the apple let's say you are writing exams and you have solved five questions out of 20 questions so so far what have you done what fraction of the paper have you solved by now 5 by 20 which is actually 1 by 4 so 1 fourth of the question paper has been solved by you right let's say that a boy practices football every day for 10 hours so every day 10 hours now if we ask what fraction of the day does he practice football now in a day how many hours do we have we have 24 hours in a day and out of those 24 hours he spends 10 hours in play, practicing football that means he spends 10 by 24th of the day in football so these are all examples of fraction and everywhere you see it is a ratio of two integers the such that the denominator is not zero and also everywhere you see that fraction is actually telling what part of the total like what how much hours of the total day or how much part of the apple or how much part of the question paper so fraction always answers how much of the total now it comes to types of fraction now fractions can be divided into many types proper fraction where the numerator is less than the denominator now can you tell me a quick recap what is numerator what is denominator denominator d for denominator d for down so the number which is present down is denominator number which is present on the top is numerator so examples of proper fraction could be 1 by 9 it could be minus 3 by 6 it could be 1 by 200 so these are all examples of proper fractions because you see the numerator is smaller than the denominator and it has also been observed that the absolute value of the fraction is less than 1 of the fraction when I say that means for proper fractions what is the meaning of absolute value absolute value means non-negative value the value without considering the sign for example here you have minus 3 by 6 if I ask you what is the absolute value of minus 3 by 6 the absolute value would be 3 by 6 because we have to uh, ignore the sign whether it is a positive sign or a negative sign absolute value is always positive so absolute value of 1 by 9 would be 1 by 9 absolute value of minus 3 by 6 would be 3 by 6 yes perfect so that's absolute value so in proper fraction we see that absolute value is always less than 1 that means when you actually look at the value of 1 by 9 you would see that this value is less than 1 you take any example let's say 2001 divided by 2000 2. This is also a proper fraction because numerator is lesser but when you actually divide and see what is the value you would see that this is lesser than 1. You talk about 19 by 20. Here also this is a proper fraction and the value of this fraction is less than 1. Now can you guess what would be improper fraction just the reverse of proper fraction so here numerator is more than the denominator so something like 19 by 18 or minus 2001 divided by 2000 or minus 9 by 2 so these are all examples of improper fractions because we see that the numerator the number on the top is bigger than the number below so these are examples of improper fraction and the last one is mixed fraction which is neither a proper fraction nor an improper fraction so what it is it is basically a combination of whole number and proper fraction so something like this let us look at some examples say 3 1 by 2 what is this here 3 is a whole number and 1 by 2 is a proper fraction so 3 1 by 2 is a mixed fraction so this as a whole is a mixed fraction similarly you think of minus 7 3 by 4 
you can think of 3, 1 by 10, 1 by 100. So these are all examples of mixed fraction. Now a mixed fraction, one, one interesting thing about a mixed fraction is that it can always be written as an improper fraction. Do you know how? For example, you have 3, 1 by 2. So how do we convert it into a proper or improper fraction? First of all, you will not be able to convert a mixed fraction into a proper fraction. Every time you would get an improper fraction. If you want, you can try it out with a number of mixed fractions. Now first, how do we convert it? You multiply these two and then add these two. So just remember this, a multiply here and an addition here. So what we do is we actually multiply 3 into 2. So that is 6 and with the product we add 1. So basically 3 into 2 plus 1 divided by the denominator remains the same. It was 2 so it will still remain 2. So it becomes 6 plus 1 by 2 which is equal to 7 by 2. So 3 1 by 2 is the same as 7 by 2. So every mixed fraction can also be written as an improper fraction. Like 3 1 by 2 is written as 7 by 2. Now can you tell me how can you write 3 1 by 100? So here also you will multiply these two and then add this. So basically this would be 100 into 3 plus 1 divided by 100. So this would be 301 by 100. So this is again an improper fraction. Now do you know why a mixed fraction can only be expressed as improper fraction? That's because in a mixed fraction you already have one part as proper fraction. But the moment you multiply it with the whole number, the overall value increases. Right? Because what is happening is the denominator remains the same. There is no change in the denominator. But in the numerator, we are multiplying it with a whole number and then adding something because of which the value of the numerator is increasing. And whenever the value of numerator is more, it is an improper fraction. Therefore, a mixed fraction always gives rise to an improper fraction. Clear? So that's about proper, improper and mixed fraction. Now here in this lesson we will only deal with the positive numbers even though fractions can be negative because fractions deal with integers. But uh, just to keep things simple at this level we will mostly deal with the positive values of fractions. Now again when we talk about fractions it becomes important to talk about like and unlike fractions. So what are like fractions and what are unlike fractions? Now those fractions with same denominators are called like fractions. So let us look at some examples. So let's say 1 by 2, 5 by 2, 789 by 2, minus 5 by 2, 0 by 2. All of these are like fractions because all of them have the same denominator that is 2. So they are all like fractions. Now when it comes to unlike fractions, these are definitely fractions with different denominators. For example 0, 16 by 5, 1 by 3, 9 by 8. So these are all unlike fractions. Anyways, 0 is a whole number because any whole number can be written as ratio of two integers because 0 can be written as 0 by 1. 5 can be written as 5 by 1. But here when we are talking specifically about fractions, we are not considering the whole numbers. So let's say for unlike fractions like here 16 by 5, 1 by 3, 9 by t. 9 by 8, everywhere you see that the denominators are different. Now even if the numerator is the same, like 9 by 8 and 9 by 7, here the denominators are different, so they are unlike fractions. Doesn't matter whether the numerators are same or not. So when we, you know, like uh, differentiate fraction as like or unlike, we only compare their denominators. So it is independent of their numerators. Now here you can ask a very very interesting question. Let us consider these two fractions 9 by 3 and 21 by 7. Consider these two fractions. 
What do you think? Are they like fractions or unlike fractions? Now directly looking at them, you quickly compare the denominators. Here it is 3 and here it is 7. So they are different. So they definitely should be unlike fractions. But you know, something very interesting is there. Actually, both of these fractions, they actually represent the same fraction. These are just different ways of representing the same fraction. You know why? When you look at 9 by 3, the value of this fraction comes out to be 3 because 3 into 3 is equal to 9. When you look at the value of 21 by 7, here also the value comes out to be 3. So basically 9 by 3 and 21 by 7, they both represent the same number 3. So that means in a way, both of these fractions are kind of, you know, similar or kind of uh, equivalent, you can say. Equivalent fractions. So what are equivalent fractions? These are different fractions representing the same number, even though the fractions are different. Because like the example which I considered, when you think of 9 by 3 and you compare it with 21 by 7, they are definitely two different fractions. But these two fractions are representing the same number and that is why they are categorized as equivalent fractions. So equivalent. Now had we wanted we could have told them equal fractions but they are not equal because the fractions are actually different but they are representing the same thing. That is why they are equivalent. So let us consider this example. Let's say that there is a pizza and this little boy wants to have pizza. What he does? He cuts this pizza into eight equal halves. So into eight equal slices it has been cut. And how many slices does he eat? He eats two slices of pizza. So that means if I ask how much fraction or what part of the pizza did the boy eat? So the boy ate two slices out of total 8 slices that means 2 by 8 which is nothing but 1 by 4 because 2 into 4 is 8. So basically he, the boy ate 1 fourth of the pizza. So this is one scenario. In another scenario this another boy is again hungry and he has a pizza. What he does is instead of dividing it into 8 equal halves he divided it into 4 equal halves. Right? And then he ate one half. So that means he ate one slice out of the four slices. So if I ask you what fraction of the pizza is being eaten by this boy, it would be one slice out of four slices, which is one fourth of the pizza. So whether this boy ate two slices out of eight slices or this boy ate one slice out of four slices, it is all the same. That's because two by eight and one by four are equivalent fractions. So one by eight and two by 1 by 4 and 2 by 8, these are examples of equivalent fractions. Now, I hope you understand what are equivalent fractions. They are not equal. They are different fractions, but they represent the same number. So, let us consider more examples. So, the first example that we would consider is 3 by 9 and 7 by 21. So, 3 by 9 corresponds to 1 by 3. 7 by 21 also corresponds to 1 by 3. So, this is an example of equivalent fraction. Similarly, 10 by 20 and 4 by 8. So, even though they look very different from each other, but this represents 1 by 2. This also represents 1 by 2. So they are again equivalent fractions. Now let us see how do we make equivalent fractions. So if I ask you make equivalent fractions of 1 by 2. Make equivalent fractions of 1 by 2. So let's say that is a task that is being given to you. So how can you make equivalent fractions? Now 1 by 2 right so this is the given fraction now if i multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same whole number will that affect the fraction no because when we are multiplying it with to the numerator as well as to the denominator let's say we multiply both numerator and denominator by 2 so so the value of the fraction remains unchanged because whatever we have multiplied we have also divided in a way right because if 
whatever like it, it is something like this let's say that you have a piggy bank and there are 100 rupees in the piggy bank okay so you take out 50 rupees to buy a notebook and your brother puts in 50 rupees into the pig, piggy bank so that means the net amount which is there in the piggy bank is still 100 because you have taken out 50 but your brother at the same time had put 50 so that means the total content inside is still 100 so the total amount in the piggy bank remains unchanged so the same thing happens here you multiply something to the numerator and you multiply the same thing to the denominator as well in that case the overall value of the fraction remains the same so in this way by adding the same whole, by multiplying the same whole number to the numerator and denominator you can make many equivalent fractions so this shows 2 by 4 is an equivalent fraction now instead of multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2 if you multiply them by 3 so what do you get you get 3 by 6 so 3 by 6 is also an equivalent fraction of 1 by 2 now instead of multiplying by 3 if you multiply by 4 what do you get you get 4 by 8 so 2 by 4 3 by 6 4 by 8 and so on these are all ex equivalent fractions of 1 by 2 in fact this is how we make equivalent fractions of a given fraction that is by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same whole number fine so this was all about the different types of fractions now how do we compare two fractions like on the screen you see a couple of fractions like 2 by 3 7 by 3 1 by 3 2 by 5 now if i ask you which fraction is bigger or which fraction is smaller how do you determine which one is bigger or which one is smaller so the first scenario where we have the same denominator what, what do we call these type of fractions two fractions having the same denominator they are called like fractions correct so here 2 by 3 and 7 by 3 they are like fractions so how do we know which is bigger now since the denominator is already same so we do not need to bother about it so the fraction with a bigger numerator is bigger so here in this case one is 2 the other one is 7 now we know that 7 is greater than 2 or 2 is smaller than 7 therefore 7 by 3 is also greater than 2 by 3 so this is greater now the challenge comes when the denominator is are not the same in this case it is 1 by 3 here it is 2 by 5 so whether we should compare the numerator or we should compare the denominator so that's the problem we have so what do we do so the first step in this case would be to make their denominator same so we have to ensure that we reach we make equivalent fractions of both of these fract numbers so that we arrive at numbers with same denominators so how do we do that so for that what we do is the first step for that would be to find out lcm of 3 and 5 that is the denominators so what is LCM least common multiple you remember we had learned about how to find HCF and LCM in class 6 if you have forgotten then refer the videos of uh, maths videos of class 6 to understand LCM in detail now least common multiple means it is a number which is going to be a common multiple of both 3 as well as 5 now for 3 and 5 the least common multiple is 15 right so because 3 into 5 is 15 and 5 into 3 is also 15 so it is a common multiple of 3 and 5 now once we have find this out what we do is you consider both the fractions one by one so first we consider 1 by 3 what we do we multiply both the numerator and denominator by a whole number such that in the denominator such that in the product the denominator is 15 because 15 is the LCM so 3 into what gives 15 3 into 5 so we will multiply the numerator also by 5 so what do we get we get 5 by 15 similarly we will do it for the other fraction that is 2 by 5 so we want to multiply the numerator and denominator by a same whole number such that in the result the denominator is 15 so 5 into 3 is 15 so we will multiply the numerator also by 3 so this becomes 6 by 15 
So you see here by looking at this you can say that 1 by 3 and 5 by 15 these are equivalent fractions because they represent the same value. Similarly 2 by 5 and 6 by 15 these are also equivalent fractions because they represent the same value. Now it is very easy to compare these two values because you have the same denominator and in the numerator 5 is less than 6 therefore 5 by 15 will be less than 6 by 15 and therefore 1 by 3 is less than 2 by 5. So we can say 1 by 3 is less than 2 by 5. So in this way we can compare two fractions. So even if they have different denominators, the, our first step would be to convert each fraction into an equivalent fraction such that both the fractions have same denominators. And for that we find out LCM of the denominators. So this is, this is the exact process that we follow. So the tip that we need to remember while comparing fractions is that make sure that the denominators are same. Now if it is already same in the question as in the first case then your job is almost done. If it is not same then by finding out LCM we will have to ensure that the denominators are same. The one with bigger numerator is the bigger fraction. Now once the denominators are same, one with bigger numerator is bigger fraction. Now let us look at addition of fractions. How do we add fractions? Now addition of fractions. This is something which you have learned in detail in your junior classes but still we will have a quick recap that how do we add fractions. Now again there can be two scenarios. First scenario, scenario could be adding like fractions that is fractions with same denominators. Now let in, in that case the, your job is pretty simple. Let's say you have one fraction as 6 by 15 and you have another fraction say 9 by 15. So how do you add them? You just need to do one thing. You need to add the numerators because in the result also the denominator is going to be the same. So the numerator would be 6 plus 9 which is equal to 15 by 15 which is equal to 1. So this is how we add fractions with same denominators. What about fractions with different denominators that is the unlike fractions. For example you have one fraction 6 by 15 and the other fraction is 9 by 5. So they are different denominators. So here also we will follow the same approach. We are going to convert them into like fractions. How do we convert them into like fractions? Again we will take LCM of 5 and 15 that is you take the LCM of the two denominators and what would be the LCM of 5 and 15 this is how we find LCM right 5 1s are 5, 5 3s are 15 and 3 1s are 3 so the LCM would be 5 into 3 which is equal to 15 so the LCM of 5 and 15 is 15 Right? So once you have taken the LCM, this LCM is going to be the denominator in the result. So this would be 15. Now what we do is 6 by 15. So 15 into 1 is 15. So therefore what we do is 6 into 1 plus 5 into 3 is 15. So in the numerator we do 9 into 3. So this is the approach that we follow. Very simple. First find out LCM. The LCM of the two denominators would be the denominator in the result. And in the numerator you find out what is that number which when multiplied by the denominator of this fraction will give this LCM. And then you multiply that number with the numerator. In this case 15 into 1 is equal to 15. So we multiplied 1 to 6. 5 into 3 is equal to 15. Therefore, we multiply 3 to 9. So, this would be 6 into 1 is 6 plus 9 into 3 is 27 divided by 15. So, 27 plus 6 would be 27 plus 6 would be 33 divided by 15. So 33 by 15 would be the sum of these two fractions. So, this is how we add fractions. Now let us look at subtraction of fractions that also is done in a similar way. So when you have fractions with same denominators like say, let's say 6 by 15 minus 9 by 15 in that case the denominator will remain the same. We just need to subtract the numerators that is 6 minus 9 
which is equal to minus 3 by 15. So this would be the result. And when you have fractions with different denominators like 6 by 15 and 9 by 5. So in this case again you find out the LCM of 5 and 15. So just now in the previous slide we found out that LCM of 5 and 15 is 15. So 6 by 15 minus 9 by 15. This is equal to denominator would be 15. Now 15 into 1 is 15 therefore 6 into 1 minus 5 into 3 is 15 so 9 into 3. So this would be 6 minus 27 divided by 15. So this would be equal to minus 21 divided by 15. So this is the result of subtraction. So for addition and subtraction so one scenario when they have when both the fractions have same denominator it is pretty simple that is you directly add or subtract the numerators but when you have different denominators you take the LCM of both the denominators and then you proceed with the addition or subtraction. So basically this is how we add or subtract fractions. So now we will look at some of the questions based on different types of fractions, uh, equivalent fractions, addition and subtraction of them. So, so question number one, solve 9 by 11 minus 4 by 15. So it is subtraction involving different denominators that is unlike fractions. So what we will do our first step would be to find out LCM of 11 and 15. So what would be the LCM of 11 and 15? Let's say 11 and 15. So 11 ones are 11 and 15 will remain as it is and in, for 15 Again, you can say 3 5s are 15, again 5. Hmm. So the LCM would be 11 into 3 into 5. So this is equal to 165. So 11 into 3 into 5 is 165. So LCM of 11 and 15 is 165. So 9 by 11 minus 4 by 15. So whatever is the LCM that would become the denominator. Now 11 into how much is equal to 165. So when you divide 11, 165 by 11, you see that 11 into 15 is equal to 165. Therefore 9 into 15 minus 15 into how much is equal to 165. 11. So this would be 4 into 11. So 9 into 15 is equal to 135 and 4 into 11 is 44 divided by 165. So 135 minus 44 is equal to 91 divided by 165. So this would be the answer. Let us look at the next one. 8 1 by 2 minus 3 5 by 8. What are these fractions called? These are called mixed fractions. Now whenever you have to do any kind of operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, anything with mixed fraction, the first step is always to convert the mixed fraction into improper fraction. So your first step would be converting the mixed fractions into improper fractions. And how do we do that? You remember 2 into 8 plus 1 that is how we do it. So 2 into 8 is 16 plus 1 that is 17 by 2 minus 8 into 3 is 24 plus 5 that is 29 by 8. So we have converted them into improper fractions. Now you when you look at their uh, denominators you see that they are different that shows that these are unlike fractions. So what we have to do we will have to find out LCM of 2 and 8. Now let's find LCM of 2 and 8. So 2 1s are 8, 2 4s are 8, 2 2s are 4, 2 1s are 2. So the LCM would be 2 into 2 into 2 which is equal to 8. So their LCM is 8. Therefore the denominator will become 8. Now 2 into how much is equal to 8? 4. Therefore 17 into 4 minus 8 into how much is equal to 8? 1. Therefore 29 into 1. Now 17 into 4 is equal to 68 minus 29 divided by 8. So this is equal to 39 divided by 8. So this would be the result in the form of improper fraction. If you want to write the result in the form of mixed fraction, then you divide 39 by 8. So 8 fours are 32. So you get 6. Therefore, 
This is 7. So therefore the answer is 4, 7 by 8. 4 is the quotient and remainder divided by divisor. So that is how we write it in mixed fraction. That is 4, 7 by 8. So this is the answer. Question number 2. Um, arrange in descending order. What is the meaning of descending order? Descending order is nothing but decreasing order. So that means the bigger ones first and then the smaller ones. Now in this case we have three different numbers that is 1 by 5, 3 by 7 and 7 by 10. Now when you look at their denominators all of them have different denominators right. So our first job is to change them all to same denominators that is all of them should be like fractions only then we will be able to compare who is bigger and who is smaller. So for that what will we do we will find out LCM of all the three denominators that is 5, 7 and 10. So how do we find LCM 5, 7, 10. So 5 ones are 5, 7 remains as it is, 5 twos are 10. Now 2, 1, 7 remain as it is, 2 ones are 2. And now 7, 1, 1, 1. So LCM is equal to 5 into 2 into 7, which is equal to 70. So this is the LCM of the three denominators. Now once we have found out the LCM, now it is very easy to convert them into the like fractions form. So what we do, for each of them we multiply the numerator and denominator by a same whole number such that in the result the denominator is 70. Right? So 5 into how much is equal to 70? So 5 into 14 is equal to 70. So we multiply 14 on bo with both the numerator and denominator. So we get 14 by 70. The next fraction is 3 by 7. So in this case also we will multiply it by a same whole number such that the denominator in the result is 70. So 7 into 10 is 70. So we will multiply the numerator also by 10. So this would be equal to 30 by 70. Next is 7 by 10. In this case again the same thing. So 10 into 7 is 70. So we multiply the numerator also by 7. So this is 7 7 is 49 by 70. So now you see we have been able to convert each of them into a form such that all of them have the same denominator that is 70. Now it is very easy to compare because now we have to compare only the numerators. Therefore we can say that 49 is the largest of all. So 49 is greater than 30 which in turn is greater than 14. Therefore 49 by 70 will be greater than 30 by 70 will be greater than 14 by 70 and therefore we can say 49 by 70 is equivalent fraction of 7 by 10. So we can say 7 by 10 is greater than 3 by 7 is greater than 1 by 5. So this is the descending order. So you have the biggest number first and then the, it, the value gradually decreases and you have the smallest number at the last. So that's the descending order. Question number 3. A rectangular sheet of paper is 12 1 by 2 cm long and 10 2 by 3 cm wide. So you have a rectangular sheet of paper something like this. So the length is given, this is the length and this is the width which is also called the breadth. Find its perimeter. So perimeter is nothing but the boundary. So we can say that perimeter will be equal to length plus breadth plus length plus breadth. So that means basically the perimeter is equal to 2 into length plus breadth. That would be the perimeter because perimeter is actually length plus breadth plus length plus breadth. This is L, B, again L, again B. So this is this would be equal to 2L plus 2B which can be written as 2 into length plus breadth. Now in the question the length is given as 12 1 by 2 and the breadth is given, by, given as 10 2 by 3. So that means we will have to find out 2 into... 12 1 by 3 plus 10 
2 by 3. So how can we add two mixed fractions? First of all, we need to convert them into improper fractions. How do we do that? 12 into 2 plus 1, that is 24 plus 1, which is 25 by 2, plus 10 into 3, 30 plus 2, that is 32. So 32 by 3. So now what we do? How do we add these two fractions? Look at the denominator. They have different denominators. So we will find out LCM of 2 and 3. So LCM of 2 and 3 is equal to 6. So therefore the denominator will have 6. 2 into 3 is equal to 6. Therefore 25 into 3 plus 3 into 2 is equal to 6. Therefore 32 into 2. So this is equal to 2 into 25 into 3 is 75, 32 into 2 is 64, this divided by 6. So this is equal to 2 into 75 plus 64 is equal to 139 divided by 6, right. So this becomes equal to 2 into 139 divided by 6. Now we know that 2 into 3 is equal to 6. Therefore, this is 139 divided by 3. So this much centimeters would be the answer. Now if you want, you can convert this into mixed fraction again. For that, you'll have to divide 139 by 3. So I hope you'll be able to do that yourself. So let's look at the next question. Question number four. Sa Salil wants to put a picture in a frame. The picture is seven three by five centimeters wide. To fit in the frame, the picture cannot be more than seven three by ten centimeters wide. How much should the picture be trimmed? Let us say that this is the frame. So this is the frame. So let us draw it like this. Now this is our frame. Now what about the picture? The picture is slightly bigger than the frame. So the picture, maybe, let us draw it like this. So the picture is maybe this much. So this is the picture. Now if we want this picture to fit into this frame, do you think it will fit into the frame? No. So we will have to trim this much part. So this much part needs to be removed. So in this question, we have to find out that how much is this part which needs to be removed. So how will we find out this part? This total width of the picture subtracted sub, and from there we will subtract the uh, width of the frame. Right? So that, that's what we will have to do. So we will have to find out the difference. So which, how do we find the difference? Which is a bigger number? 7, 3 by 5 or 7, 3 by 10? Now logically we can understand that the picture is bigger. That is why we are trimming the picture. The picture is being cut. That means that the picture is bigger. So the width of the picture is 7, 3 by 5. So from 7, 3 by 5 we subtract 7, 3 by 10. So as we know, first of all, we will convert the mixed fractions into improper fractions. So 7 into 5, 35 plus 3, that is 38 divided by 5 minus 7 into 10, 70 plus 3, that is 73 divided by 10. In this case, again, you have different denominators. So we find out the LCM of 5 and 10, which is 10. Now 5 into 2 is equal to 10. Therefore, 38 into 2 minus 10 into 1 is equal to 10. So 73 into 1. Now this is equal to 76 minus 73 divided by 10, which is equal to 3 by 10. So 3 by 10 centimeters need to be trimmed from the picture. Question number 5. Michael finished coloring a picture in 7 by 12 hours. Vabha finished coloring the same picture in 3 by 4 hours. Who worked longer? By what fraction was it longer? So basically we will have to find out whether 7 by 12 is bigger or 3 by 4 is bigger. So we are given two fractions 7 by 12 and 3 by 4. So both of them have different denominators. So let us first try to convert them into like fractions. So for that we will find out LCM of 4 and 12 that is the denominators. 
So what would be the LCM of 4 and 12? 4 ones are 4, 4 threes are 12. So 3, 1, 1. So the LCM would be 4 into 3 which is equal to 12. So the LCM is 12. Now therefore 7 by 12 can be written as it is. What about 3 by 4? In case of 3 by 4, we multiply the numerator and denominator with such numbers that the denominator in the result is 12. So 4 into 3 is 12. So we also multiply the numerator by 3. So this becomes 9 by 12. So now we have two numbers 7 by 12 and 9 by 12. So we can say that 9 is greater than 7. Therefore 9 by 12 is greater than 7 by 12 or 3 by 4 is greater than 7 by 12. So what is 3? Who worked for 3 by 4 hours? Vabhav. So therefore we can say that Vabhav worked longer. Now the next part of the question says by what fraction was it longer? That means how much was the difference between Vabhav's working hours and Michael's working hours? So for that we will have to find out the difference between the two. So how do you find the difference? Bigger number that is 3 by 4 minus 7 by 12. So again the LCM of 4 and 12 is 12. So the denominator would be 12. 4 into 3 is 12. So this would be 3 into 3 minus 12 into 1 is 12. So this would be 7 into 1. So 9 minus 7 by 12 which is equal to 2 by 12. So 2 into 6 is 12. So this is equal to 1 by 6 hours. So the difference between the two is 1 by 6 hours. So now that we have looked upon the basic concepts of uh, fractions, it is time that we will understand how do we do multiplication of fractions because we have already learned about addition and subtraction. So the next operation that needs to be discussed is multiplication. Now what do we mean by multiply? So let us take this example in order to understand where do we need to multiply fractional numbers or where do we need to multiply fractions. Let's say that you have a pizza and there are 10 kids or there are 10 of your friends in your house and each of them say that each of them needs one fourth of a pizza. That means if you take a pizza, cut it into four equal halves. So one part of it is nothing but one by four. So this is one fourth of a pizza, right? And each of them tells that they need one fourth of a pizza. Now, if I ask you that how many pizzas would you exactly need for these 10 kids? So one of each one needs one fourth of a pizza. And there are how many kids? There are 10 kids. So 1 by 4 into 10, this would give you the total number of pizzas that you need. So basically when we multiply 1 by 4 with 10, what are we trying to do? We are basically trying to add 1 by 4 10 times because there are 10 kids, right? So this kid needs 1 by 4, this kid needs 1 by 4 of a pizza, this kid needs 1 fourth, this kid needs 1 fourth. So what you are doing 1 by 4? plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 till 10 times. Now adding 1 by 4 for 10 times is going to be a tedious job, right? So that is why instead of adding the same number multiple times, we multiply it. So since we want to add it 10 times, we say that, okay, 1 by 4 multiplied by 10. And that is how we can find out how many pizzas do we need. Now the question here is, how do we multiply? So that is what we are going to learn here. That how, do, how are we going to multiply uh, numbers involving fractions? So let us first understand how to multiply a fraction with a whole number. Like the example in the previous slide, 1 by 4 was a fraction and 10 was a whole number. So how do we multiply a fraction with a whole number? So what do you see on the screen? A birthday cake. So let's say that it's your birthday and you have cut this beautiful strawberry cake. And you have invited 5 friends for your birthday party. And each one of them wants one eighth of the cake because the cake is really huge. So they say that I want one eighth of the cake. If you divide the cake into eight equal parts, 
then I need one part out of those eight equal parts and all of them say the same thing that we want one eighth of this cake. Right? So now if I ask you that so what we did we started giving one slice to each of them so we gave each one of them one eighth of the cake. So if I now ask you that total what fraction of the cake was eaten up by your friends together that means total how much part of the cake did the five of them together eat so one of them each one ate one eighth of the cake but how many of them ate five of them so one by eight needs to be multiplied by five right so when you multiply it by 5, then whatever you get, that gives you the part of the cake that is eaten up by all these 5 kids. Because once the 5 of them have eaten, you do not have the entire cake anymore. A good part of the cake has already been eaten. So what is that part of the cake which is being eaten by these people? So that part is given by 1 by 8 multiplied by 5. Now let us come to the point. How do we multiply this? How do we do this multiplication? So when we say 1 by 8 multiplied by 5, we basically mean 1 by 8 multiplied by 5 by 1. So now there is a very simple tip that you need to follow in order to multiply fractions. All you need to do is multiply numerator with numerator multiply denominator with denominator. So whenever you are multiplying fractions, just remember this. Numerator multiply numerator divided by denominator multiply denominator. That's the simple logic that you need to follow. So what are the numerators here? 1 and 5. So 1 into 5 divided by what are the denominators? 8 into 1. So 1 into 5 is 5, 8 into 1 is 8. So once you multiply this, what you get? You get 5 8. So that means 5 8 of the cake was eaten up by 5 of your friends. So 5 8 part of the cake was eaten by all of them together. Clear? So now you understood how we do multiplication. Now let, let us understand one step ahead as well. Let's ask that okay so we got to know that this part of the cake which is vanished now is the 5 8 part of the cake. Now, how much is this part of the cake which is left out? So, how much part of the cake is now left out for your family members? So, how would you get the left out part? So, the left out part would be nothing but 1 minus 5 eighth. Why 1? Because the complete cake is 1. Right? So, the complete cake would be denoted by 1. And out of that 5 eighth part is already eaten. So, 1 minus 5 eighth which will be equal to 8 so 1 the here you have 1 so 1 into 8 so 1 into 8 minus 5 into 1 so this would give 8 minus 5 by 8 that is equal to 3 by 8 that means 3 8 of the cake is left out so this portion of the cake which is left out is the 3 8 part and this portion which is vanished is the 5 8 part which is which is already been eaten so I hope that with this example it is very much clear to you that where do we need to multiply fractions and how do we multiply them. So here we have relatively considered the simple scenario where we multiplied a fraction with a whole number. Now you might come across situation where you need to multiply a fraction with a fraction. So confused do you think? Under, under what such condition do we need to multiply a fraction with a fraction? So we will consider the same situation, the same birthday party. So now let's say that in your birthday party there was a very little girl and when you give that girl a slice of cake, the girl says that I can't eat this entire slice. So I can't eat so much of a cake. So how much did you give to the girl? So you had offered her one eighth because you thought that all your friends ate one eighth of the cake. So you assumed that she would also be able to eat that much. But when you gave it to her, she was too little to eat that much. And then she says that I can't eat this entire slice. Can you please give me half of it? So now what is she demanding? She is asking you to give half of the slice. So can you tell me what fraction of this entire cake is she asking for? 
because you gave her one eighth of the cake. But what is she asking for? She is asking for half of this part. That means she is basically asking for half of one eighth. This is what she is asking for, right? So that means how will you find out half of one eighth? Half of one eighth is nothing but half multiplied by one eighth. So what is this? This is nothing but fraction multiplied by a fraction. So the result of this multiplication, what would be that result? What would that result signify? That result would signify what fraction of this entire cake is she demanding? What fraction of the entire, you gave her one eighth of the cake, but she is demanding half of one eighth. So how will we multiply? Here also we will follow the same logic. Numerator multiplied by numerator, denominator multiplied by denominator. So this would be 1 into 1 by 2 into 8. So 1 into 1 is 1, 8 into 2 is 16. So she is demanding 1 16th of the cake. So basically what she is demanding is if you divide the cake into 16 equal slices, then one slice out of those 16 slices is what she is asking for. So just to brief, just to sum up whatever we discussed here is what you had offered her was this, that is one eighth of the cake, the entire cake if you divide it into eight equal slices. So you had offered one such slice to her, but what she asked for was one sixteenth. That means if you divide this cake into 16 equal part, so one part out of 16 part would be this much. So just compare this. Now, when you look at this, this is very small slice. This slice is exactly half of this slice, right? So that is what, what she had told. She had told you to give half of what you had offered her, right? So with this, we get to understand where exactly we need to multiply fraction with fraction and how do we multiply them. So I hope that multiplication, the, the part of how to multiply is relatively easier. I hope you found the video useful. In the next video, we are going to learn about division of fractions and how do we represent fractions in pictures. And trust me, that's going to be super interesting. So stay tuned.